Hi, it's Christine Edgar at the Farmington Libraries. For today's maker activity, we will be doing a puzzle tree art. We will need puzzle pieces and shades. We will need hot glue gun and hot glue sticks, an eight by 10 canvas, brown acrylic paint, and a paintbrush. An optional step we also used was a tree image stencil and graphite paper. So go ahead and get your materials and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get started. The first thing that we wanna do is to take out our canvas and I'm gonna take off the wrapping. There's a lot of steps to this program, but it's kind of a nice, relaxing thing to do. So I thought you would enjoy it. Take this off. And now we have our graphite paper and our, I don't know, I guess you'd call it the tracing stencil. So this is graphite paper, if, you if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like the old carbon copy paper. And there is a dull side and a shiny side. The shiny side is what you want to place face down. So um, it's made of graphite, like with pencils. And we are going to take our stencil here and we're gonna put it down this way so we can see this. I'm just gonna tape it down into place a little bit just so that as I'm writing, it doesn't shift around. And you'll wanna get a pen, a pencil, something a little sharp. You wouldn't want a marker because that's not really gonna show anything. But, um, so you wanna start and you wanna start tracing it so I'm just going to trace the outline here and it would be good if you could get like a blue pen, I'm using pencil, something to show because you're going to have to trace all of these lines and this way it will show you um, that you've already gone over it if you can see your pencil markings. So I'm not going to like color all this in, that's not necessary because we're going to paint it in. This is just giving us a nice stencil so you can just keep that in mind. We're just going to outline all of this and you can see I, I traced here and here and now you can see it made a line here so that's what we're doing now if I can just match it up <laughs> this is why I say you want to tape it down because it will help it oh it'll help it um, stay put and keep your picture in place so I'm going to hold this one down too And then I am just, like I said, you're not gonna color this in, you're not gonna color in all these black parts. You just want to outline it because this is going to give us a nice outline of our tree branches and tree trunk design. And then we're gonna have it already on our canvas. If you are good at doing freehand and you would like to just take it, like eyeball this, and paint it freehand, that is fine. Um, you can go ahead and do that. I am not that talented, so I like to keep it to my level, and I like to be able to offer people that help. But it's kind of like most of the crafts that we do in our maker programs. Um, some people are more advanced, and if you kind of wanna you know, put your own spin on it, that's, that's fine. Just tracing these branches, which will really help us. Okay, so I am going to pause this here and come back when I have traced this entire tree and um, you can pause this video while you do that and then resume when you're ready to start the next step. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step, which is to paint in our tree branches. You can see here, this is what it looks like. And now I'm gonna take my brown paint and my paintbrush and I'm going to start. 
filling it in. And you can see here, I didn't quite go all the way to the end. You can easily just add that. This looks like it'll probably need uh, more than one coat, but that's fine. I'm just going to start with one uh, layer, get the basic shape, and then I can go over and go over it again for more color. finished and I really like it. I did not draw all the branches. There's some that I missed um, but I, I'm happy with it and then I went over it a second time to make it a little bit darker. So now you're going to take out all your puzzle pieces and you're going to kind of you know flip them all so you can see the, the pattern. Um, they're all from different I believe they're even from different puzzles. Um, so we're going to use them to, to make like little uh, leaves. Um, so once your area is completely dry, what I like to do, I've done this before, I like to kind of place them all. You might not use them all. Um, that's fine, you can do whatever you like. But I like to place them how I thought I'd want them to, to be. And then you can go around and glue them. When it comes to like flat edges like this, what I like to do is um, kind of have that sticking in so that the jagged part comes out because I feel like the jagged part looks more like a, tr like, a, like a leaf. And some of these, like this is, this is just like how I kind of did it when I was doing it. Um, how someone would have like bumps and stuff and like kind of have that sticking out here. But it's however you like. You might have a more artistic eye than I do. Um, but it's nice to kind of turn them, twist them, not always have the same edges in the same directions. Um, it looks kind of funny at first, but then when you kind of, you know, look at it from a distance, it really, you don't even notice that they're puzzle pieces if you were looking at it from a distance. So you can have them overlapping if you'd like. You could have more than one layer if you would like. It's all in what you want. This was such, um, I thought just like a fun, creative thing and, and really great way to upcycle, which I'm always trying to do if I can. So I would um, I'll definitely be doing this one again. Um, I don't necessarily think it would be a tree, but maybe some other form. So I'm just gonna kind of place it. You can 
match the color together if you want. I kind of put a variety of different like greens in here. So. I just don't really like more than one of the same kind together, but that's, that's me. Just kind of pushing some of these out to make room. And yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to start gluing. You only need a little. Maybe put it in the central part of the puzzle, I would say. And like almost everything with hot glue, you'll find that there's little strings. So um, sometimes it helps when you're all done just to just, you know, clean it up a little. those hot glue guns, those hot glue strings. Okay. That did not take as long as I thought it would. Um, actually, I'm going to add, since I have some extra, I'm going to add some on, on the ground as if they're little fallen leaves. I think that'd be really cute. So that's optional. If you have extras, you can do that. If you want to, you know, layer over here and fill in the gaps, I think you could do that too. This was so fun. I really liked this project. Um, I just, sometimes I like the projects that take a longer amount of time and you can just really 
just spend a lot of time and relax with it. I think that that was when people got together in person to do our maker activities. I think that's what people like, just like being able to sit and chat together and unwind. Um, so this was a fun one. <laughs> Strings are fighting me. This was a fun one in that you were able to really relax, do something that was, I feel like not too challenging, um, but still very engaging. Um, and I hope that you share, some of you have been sharing the projects that you've been doing and they have been really, really great. Uh, better than I could do and I'm really impressed. And I always enjoy seeing like how people put their spin on it and how people enjoyed it. So um, feel free to keep doing that. You can email us at flref at farmingtonlibraries.org and share and if you have any feedback or any comments, uh, any suggestions for future programming, we'd love to hear that too. So I hope you enjoyed yourself today and stay tuned for our next maker program.